Good morning, welcome back. This is Professor Schimmel with segment three in what is turning out to be the virology series of videos. And um, I've had a busy morning on the ranch and I'm ready now to sit down and record uh, some content for you guys. And I wanna dedicate this segment to a very brief discussion of smallpox and the history of smallpox. Um, what we will do is we'll talk about this in more detail as one of our class activities. And I think that I will um, test you on, or I should say quiz you on this material. Um, we can talk more about that when we're in class together. And by the way, I'm gonna be throwing some numbers, uh, some facts at you guys. For right now, you can just uh, sit back and listen and I will drop some PowerPoint slides in at the end of the video um, so that you can make sure you get this information down. All right, a little bit of background. Um, historians estimate that smallpox entered the human population about 10,000 years ago. I'm not sure what the evidence is for that. I haven't researched that specific fact. Maybe we can talk about that in class. Uh, the first credible evidence of smallpox in the human population was found in um, Egyptian mummified remains that are about 3,000 years old. Uh, in the 18th century, smallpox killed approximately 400,000 Europeans every year. Uh, and at that time in history, smallpox was responsible for about one third of blindness cases. That would be when the viral infection would uh, enter the eye. The, um, the pox can be um, uh, very damaging, as you can see if you look at historical photographs of people that have had smallpox. Um, all right, let's see. The mortality rate at that time in history was approximately 20 to 60 percent overall, um, with an over 80 percent mortality rate in children. So um, pretty, pretty rough time in history, right? Um, okay, sorry. All right, background continued. Uh, in the 20th century, smallpox took uh, between 300 and 500 million lives every year. Uh, in the 1950s, smallpox infections numbered 50 million cases a year worldwide. And in 1967, the World Health Organization estimated um, that um, in that year, there were about uh, 15 million smallpox cases and about 2 million people died from the infection. That's in 1967. All right, uh, there were a number of vaccination campaigns that took part in the late 19th century and um, in the 20th century as well. Uh, the last case of smallpox in the United States was uh, recorded in 1949. And in 1972, we stopped vaccinating the population of the United States for, uh, for this particular virus. Now, um, Let's take a broader look at this. In 1979, because of the aggressive uh, vaccination campaigns, the World Health Organization declared that smallpox had been completely eradicated, a little redundant there, right, uh, from the human population. Amazing. Uh, and to this day, it remains the only communicable human disease that has been completely eradicated from our population. Uh, now, the Centers for Disease Control states that they have enough smallpox vaccine stockpiled to vaccinate the entire population of the United States in the event of a bioterrorism uh, attack using the virus. And uh, the vaccine is approximately 95% effective for three to five years after it's given. After that time, immunity will wane unless the individual gets revaccinated. Uh, so some of the things that I wanna talk to, uh, talk to you guys about, uh, I think I got all of that. Um, some questions for discussion that we can talk about during one of our activities is, first of all, who's Edward Jenner? And I mean, um, in a broader sense, other than just the obvious about um, what he did with the um, smallpox vaccination. Let, let's look at that history in, in some more depth. And also, what other communicable diseases might we reasonably be able to eradicate with uh, vaccinations? Okay, I'm going to call it good for now. I'll be back in, uh, for me anyways, just a minute with the uh, next segment of the virology series. Thanks for watching.